eating a purple ball sack with a tooth and a legless green smurf. Now look, podcast listener, I know we exaggerate to comedic effect on this podcast. If it was an actual human ball sack <laughs> playing this character, it would not be more ball sack like <laughs> than the model they use. Closer to a G rating to show us a ball sack. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema to prove we can take it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. This was terrifying. Right? <laughs> I'm genuinely scarred, like yep. trauma. No horror movie I have ever watched has stayed with me and haunted me the way this film did. Yes. Yeah. Skinny Marink ain't got nothing, nothing. on who Manny. <laughs> I feel like people overuse the word trauma. I'm Answer. not. Yep. I want to be super no, clear. We're using this it. Is I will real. tell an Iraqi veteran to his face oh, and Christ. single arm <laughs> that oh, this oh, was more traumatizing <laughs> than what he's been through. Do you have to murder people in claymation? No. No. Well, there you go. Their faces stayed one shape the whole time. <laughs> and that voice, of course, is coming from 900 miles to my northeast, and it belongs to my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm touching you right now, Noah. Right. Now, in the timeline, <laughs> I'm touching you. All You're right. in Jersey, and I'm touching you. Why do you have more arms? <laughs> I think we've already spilled the beans on this one, but let's make it official. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? I don't want to talk about it. I think I'm <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time it's happened in 460 no, episodes. Reject. Plus bonuses. We're gonna have to like bring Kara in to talk you through it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Slowly losing cast members one by one like a horror movie. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is illegal. This is a HIPAA violation to ask me this to definitely, answer. Yeah, right, for sure. right. But if you did want to talk about it, what would you say? <sighs> we watched Humania. It's the story of a magical board game for kids. That sucks you into a claymation goddamn nightmare of, I think, biblical morality lessons sort is of. what they're going for. I... It's Gentile Manji. It and is it's absolutely terrible. Gentile Manji. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you thought the nightmare fuel of the glib go glab glab and the Dudley Dumpling puppets were scarring, you know nothing of the power of Christian claymation. Well, you know, Fuck. it's funny because like up until this point, I never understood when people said oh, like claymation freaks me out. I never understood that until I watched this movie. And now I get it. Yeah. Right. I have a whole new like genre of fear thanks to this movie. Yeah, I've been holding back. So there's a Mormon claymation movie that sort of has gone around the internet for a while. And there's a scene in hell where like fucking Mark Twain leads him into like this land of scary claymation angels. It will be nothing compared to the experience of watching Humani. I'm just saying. Well, it's good to know. Good to know that we're easing in there. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? No, no. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Fine. Best worst understanding of pinball sure. is what I'm going to go with. Okay, there's a pinball moment in the movie. There's no reason for there to be a pinball moment in the well, movie. Well, because pinball is sinful. And morality lessons. Sure. and they, Yeah, that's actually, they're going for pinball is sinful. Yep. And even worse, maybe, the movie got very confused about, like, the conceptual intricacies of goals. the concept of pinball. Yeah, goals of pinball, yeah. Yeah, yes. High score specifically, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was going to go with best worst mad scientist. So as was the case in so many 1980s movies, they needed something weird to happen. So there's just a mad scientist that lives in the neighborhood and has magical science powers. And that's the explanation for why it exists. And this is the most half-assed, lame version of that cliche you can imagine. So get ready for that. Yeah, except the way they establish him is he like opens the souls to the path of the undead yes. and like talks to a dead right. child from the Irish potato famine. And then he's like, all right, I think we've determined I'm a scientist. Yep. All right, let's move on. To the 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 fuck is, even before the claymation starts, it's traumatizing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> His face is already a pumpkin. I don't understand. <laughs> and I'm going to go with best worst child. Yeah. Okay, because this kid... 
This kid obviously is meant to have one line in a commercial, right? Like, gee, dad, I don't know if we're going to make it to the big game. But they just put him in a full length movie. So everything he says is just him falling face first into a mud puddle and being like, oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> so when I saw Best Worst Child, I assume you meant the claymation representation of the kid and and so i had to ch keep changing my best worst i'm like oh that's covered yeah. in eli's but oh so now i wish i'd wish i'd go with best worst hands or best worst eyes or best worst <laughs> snout yeah because i've seen clay before and it's never been that terrifying <laughs> you remember how leave it to beaver was not a claymation horror movie that was ad-libbed by a bad child actor Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That I do is what I that do. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been reflecting on that quite a bit recently, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I need a lot of drugs to revisit this nightmare. So we're going to pause for a quick drug break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the horrific images burned into my retina that are Who Mania. 41, 42, 43. All right. Take a break. Uh, tell me about it. Hey, fellas. Almost with the workout stuff. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, we're getting in shape. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's always good to be healthy. Because the Time Warriors. There, there, there it is. Uh, time Warriors? Yeah. Yep. Noah, we're getting ahead for this episode that airs when we're already back. <sighs> That's a forward to back to forward. There's no way that doesn't cause a time anomaly. Yeah, exactly. What? And then before you know it, dark future us has come popping out of the time stream. And then we got to fight him. Exactly. Got to fight him. Right. Well, if you're looking to get in shape for any reason, I think you should try FitBod. Oh, what's... uh? What's FitBot? Careful, Heath. You just gave Future you a point. Risk I'm willing to take. That one counts. FitBot is a fitness app that customizes each workout based on your goals and adapts them as you improve. Wow, that sounds great. But have you actually tried it? I sure have. I started using FitBot when they became a sponsor. I love how I can tell the app the equipment I have to work with so I get a great workout whether I'm at a fully stocked gym or looking to break a quick sweat in my living room. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse FitBot. All right, we're sold. Where do we sign up? Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash GAM. Nice. And it looks like it happened just in time. We have to stop them to save our future, Evil Eli. It's the only way, Evil Heath. See? Totally ripped. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it. Hey, Chris. Hey, Steve. How's it going? <laughs> Not too bad. You okay? You look a little exhausted today. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I just slept terrible last night. Oh, man, me too. I, it's, you know, this is going to sound so silly, but I had nightmares. Can you believe <laughs> me it? Me too. Me too. So weird. Yeah, I thought it was something I ate. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I, it's like, uh, excuse me, I'm an adult. Why am I having nightmares? <laughs> am I right? Totally, yeah. Dodo birds aren't even scary. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. No, sorry. My dream, my nightmare was about this dodo bird who jumped out of this card and and like, what? It's so weird. Dude, that's what that's what I dreamed about. Come on. No, you didn't. What? Yeah, I did. Is this like a prank? Or is it, did you talk to my wife this morning? No, what are you talking about? Hey, guys. Hey, sorry I'm late. I did not sleep well last night. Come You're on. You're kidding me. Oh, man, did we all have the same nightmare again? We have to tell the world about this. I'll get the clay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on the most passive-aggressive FBI warning that I've ever seen in my goddamn it's life. It's fucking <laughs> weird. It starts like the regular on one. On YouTube. But then it actually says, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Who really cares about the FBI and their stinking copyright warning? If I want to put honest filmmakers out of business, that's my business. I promise I won't complain when there's nothing more to entertain me. Yeah. And I'll leave my husband, Steven, even though he does that thing and he hates it. He hates <laughs> yeah. doing that thing, but he'll still do it for me <laughs> on Mother's Day. <laughs> well, yeah, it, there's so much that's funny about this. The first is, of course, is that the implication there is like, what do you think? That three guys are just going to drop multiple hour plus shows for your entertainment for free every week? Come on, give me a fucking break. But also like Eli's saying, like, the do not copy warning is so much funnier on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so much funnier. <laughs> also, the fact that these movie makers are that confident that people want to steal this piece of shit is fucking weird. 
<laughs> right. No, it should be like, no, make copies, please. Someone distribute that this. would be something. Do you think that guy like is ever wandering around his hometown diner and sees a kid on YouTube and he's like, yeah, well, that's the reason why you don't have a Who Mania 2 right now, <laughs> just so you know. And the kid's like, what's Who Mania? What and he's like, sure, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Fred, pull him off. Pull him off. It happened again. He saw a child didn't know what who mania is again. <laughs> so, yeah. So so we get the credits and uh, we hear these two kids voices, these two kids chatting over the credits. One is like daring the other to hit a ball right towards the upstairs window. Right. And the Foley here is supposed to be them playing catch. Right. So it's these whomps back mm -hmm. and forth. But I really wanted it to fade in. And they're just like kicking a homeless guy to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you really wanted? <laughs> hey, Keith, I'll have you know that that joke would have been, I want them to be fucking a few years ago. So I have grown. <laughs> yeah. oh, I've grown as a performer. Christ. I've grown as a man. Yeah, no, you're a better person now. Clearly. Thank you. Yep. My reservation was moved. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that before the recording. Yeah, that's, podcast no, dude, that's it's not, not that you can't get it. It's that you can't get it. Senior pets said it in an episode yep. of Citation Media, <laughs> yes. but you have to listen backwards <laughs> and play through all of Animal Well. No, 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 no fucking way. So, okay, but he hits the, he eventually he gives into the kid that's coaxing him to hit the window. The kid calls him a chicken and he just can't take it. So he hits the baseball towards the house and damn it if he doesn't break the window. Okay. Kids can't hit a baseball specifically into a specific window far away. That's not how it is. Fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let that part go. I will not let go that this actor's name is Haskell Hal Heimlich. Yeah. That's the, uh, the mad scientist. Absolutely yes. not. If you, if your last name is Heimlich and you have a child, <laughs> you cannot name that child Haskell Hal. Absolutely. No. Nope. Uh, we need to call CPS on this adult. <clears throat> yeah. Let me say something even bolder. If your last name is Heimlich, you can't have a child. <laughs> sure. sure. You have to you have to kill your bloodline. No, That's I'm, your responsibility. I feel, like, I feel like the proud Heimlich line has a lot going for it. Just, you just can't name your kids. No, because those guys, the proud Heimlich line, they're just thinking of other maneuvers, right? <laughs> That's all they're doing. It's like, you can kick someone in the balls when they're on fire and they'll drop and stop automatically like that's what that family <laughs> spends the Heimlich fortune doing and and can I say it's a substantial fortune because those posters they make a dollar for each one of them oh do so they see in the restaurant yeah they get a dollar for each one all right I don't like we got to do longer movies so Eli doesn't feel the need to vamp as much so <laughs> do bad life hacks all I the always time. do this you just usually can edit it <laughs> yeah well right yeah exactly you can't edit it this week no illusions <laughs> you're stuck with me in New Jersey the ads might just be me ranting into the middle distance again we have no reason to know otherwise okay hiccups hold a dime no this yep. is nothing this is nothing <laughs> fuck all right, so the kid runs away. He, he breaks the window and he's biking away. I guess he's going to live a life on the lamb now or whatever. But this is where the song kicks in. By Pat Boone. Pat Boone's very own Trouble Ought to Be My Middle Name. I guess it's the name of the song. Yeah, and I know the timing doesn't work out for this, but it feels like... Pat Boone heard that Randy Newman made a bunch of money on the Toy Story theme song, and he was like, oh, I could fucking do that. <laughs> Jesus, Randy, what's is this a new car again? All right, we'll fuck. Trouble on the bubble when the fuck up on my trouble. Is that it? Yep. Did I do it? Yep. Do I get a billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and I have to point out that in the lyrics to this little cutesy song about every time I turn around, I'm getting in trouble, it, it, it references beating your child twice. So... Many times. Terrifying. Every ball that I'm kicking seems to turn into a licking. Yep. And then there's a line about getting a spanking in there as well. Okay. Question, Noah, because I feel like you're of the correct generation to answer this. Just because I hide doesn't mean that I'm a chicken. I know that when I'm beat, I can depend upon my feet. Was there a you're a chicken for running away from your parents when they beat you zeitgeist going on in the 80s? I don't remember. No, they'll get in, 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 at least in my neighborhood, like the kids would hide, you, right? Like they were like, oh, your parents are pissed. Yeah, hide yeah. my shit. Yeah, right. It's a real Anne Frank situation yes. growing up. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in no I don't know if it was quite that, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is a morality movie. Yes. They're trying to do morality. There's so many ones they could, they do like three. It's like 37 minutes. One of the three is like, yeah, beating your kids is good. That's a good Bible message we'll throw in there. Yep. Yeah, exactly. 
there's also this moment where like during the song, he's like riding his bike. And as a demonstration of how, you know, it, everything just goes wrong for him, he's hitting mailboxes with a stick and one of them breaks and all the mail spills out and, it, and it's just like, oh, darn it, just innocently whacking a mailbox with a stick and something bad okay. happens. Do you think the movie doesn't know what mailbox baseball is or do you think they did it and then they felt guilty and they were like, no, 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 no. Have we can't do encourage it like, kids have to do it do. as like, he's oh, he's just like a, a drummer. He's practicing rudiments on top of mailboxes <laughs> and one of them happens to fall and he goes, he goes back and fixes it because he's, he's a Christian. They call it, hey, hey, cut. Cut. Hey, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt Heimlich. Um, we got to cut this scene. That looked way too fun and cool. Okay. Everyone's yeah. just gonna do that. To be to, to be clear, Heimlich is the mad scientist. The kid is Danny Nash. Everyone has the same name in this. Oh, movie. okay. They're all well, sure. Identical clones of the same man. Sure. But we are gonna meet Mr. Heimlich right here. If I could punch myself in the stomach and forget this movie, I'm I'm trying right now. <laughs> I'm ramming myself against my desk. <laughs> so, okay. So, but, so, but now we're going to finally meet our Heimlich. The kid ultimately goes to see this town's Doc Brown, which is Mr. Weatherfield. Yeah. Now, timeline wise, is this movie before or after Back to the Future? I believe it's before. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm more upset that this movie ripped off Back to the Future or Back to the Future ripped off this movie. <laughs> Oh, you know what? They came out the same year. Ooh. So yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a, a confluence of creativity, I guess. If you watch Back to the Future on YouTube, it actually disappears and blurs out <laughs> oh, after this movie. Do you think the Humania guy, like who now fights children in diners for watching YouTube, spent that year walking around being like, I'm just saying, okay, <laughs> Michael Fox <laughs> had to drive right through this town right. to get to big Hollywood. Maybe he saw me working on my script. <laughs> <laughs> on that park bench that I like to write on. I'm just saying, I hope something really bad happens to that guy. What I what I love about the <laughs> opening of this scene. <laughs> Thank you, Eve. <laughs> what I hope what I love the most about the scene is that he walk he goes into this shed where the mad scientist is mad sciencing. And so they've done everything they can to try to make this look like a mad scientist's laboratory, except just using the shit they had at their house. Sure. Right? Like there is a tea kettle steaming on a hot plate so that something can be smoking. So that this. something can be steaming. There's a blender filled with forks and spoons. Oh, is which there? is my favorite. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. Uh -huh. What science is that? <laughs> <laughs> Turns it on. Nope. Nope. Doesn't blend those. Okay. <laughs> Asked and answered. It's trying to make a spork. I was trying to invent something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hypotheses. And there's also this there's this great moment where like very clearly the line was written before the props were made where the kid, Christopher, he looks at the scientist's thing that he's working on. He's like, wow, that's really cool. What is it? But it's like a pressure cooker with a tube in it. Very clearly just a pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing cool at all about that. the appropriate line would be, is that a pressure cooker <laughs> or at most? Why did you put a tube on your pressure cooker? When are you going to be bombing Boston? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, but to be clear, the pressure cooker is to study the noises that plants make. It is a V8000 subsonic veggie verbalizer. V's one through 79.99 were shit, but this one. Yeah. I don't believe he's done seven other ones, let alone <laughs> yeah. 7,999. So th this is supposed to give him the ability to talk to plants, right? At least hear them. Well, yeah, he introduces it in the dumbest possible way. He, he turns to Christopher and he goes, Hey, have you ever heard plants before? And the kid's like, no. And I'm like, of course you have. You've heard leaves rustling and corn popping. And he's like, no one ever has. I'm like, I feel like that's wrong. Okay. The right <laughs> answer is, all right, I'm going to take off. Yeah. Take off. <laughs> I shouldn't have come to well, your house. Uh, I'm yes, going to go. I didn't. I'm um, going to go get beat up by the people who should love me and make me feel secure. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll catch you on the yeah. flippy flop. Good luck making Havana syndrome. Cool. I'm going to go. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, but he's like, we're gonna listen to plants for the very first time. So he puts a he puts a ear of corn into his pressure cooker, and then they, he puts on headphones, and we listen. Like, correct me if I'm wrong here. We listen to the corn scream in agony Be, as it gets popped, as it pops. tortured in a torture device. Yep, for plants. Yep. Yes. So yes, we're all agreed that that was pain screaming that the corn yep. was doing. 
Hundred percent, or it's a really weird ear of corn that was having a sexual experience. But like, <laughs> right, I, don't yeah. I don't think that's the movie he's known for. Like a like a coffee enema experience. No, right, where yeah. like it's a it's a pressure, but it's a good one. It's a <laughs> filling pressure. Doesn't know what to do with these emotions. Okay, and now verify my truth. Verify my lived experience because when they are done killing this corn and listening to its screams of agony. The two actors just gently put down their headphones and continue the movie. They do. They don't go like, what the fuck was that, man? Nothing. <laughs> they, they, he eats the popcorn. No, it's like he verified like that was that was like, yeah, his thesis was proven. He was like, yeah, they screwed. It's a torture device. It is. Okay, we're done. All right. Yeah. I do feel pain. No. Okay. Yeah. And then he eats a few pieces of popcorn and he goes like, anyway, we've done our shtick. Now, uh, what's, your, what's your plot? What's going on? You were bringing me a movie, little Timmy? Yeah. Um, can we follow up with the sentience of the shh? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do wrong? <laughs> so, yeah, so the, so the kid's like, oh, you know, I busted my front window with a baseball. And the kid is so bad at acting that he delivers it as though that had just been his morning plans. You know, it's like, what's going on with you? Hey, you know, busted the front window with a baseball. Uh, I got, you know, did, did a jog, got a jog in. Yeah, did it? I hit a mailbox and it tipped over. I tried to fix it with gum. It was a whole Went thing. to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he's like, but I can never go home again. I just have to live here in your laboratory. And he's like, you just saw me ignore the screams of this popcorn. Are you think? Do you think that's a good idea? I mean, but he says he says no. You know, you should actually go and talk to your parents about the window. And and Christopher goes, well, that's easy for you to say. They've never spanked you. Fuck. And the soundtrack is like, da 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 da. Fucking Mr. Weatherfield stops for a minute as though he's thinking about the time Chris's dad did spank him, and the movie moves on. Oh, no, we were in the same frat in college. Let me tell you, <laughs> no. when it was your father's turn at the paddle, I regretted being a Heimlich. <laughs> okay, what? Yeah, so we need obviously penalties for every single parent that's ever physically touched a kid in a negative way, ever, ever, ever not the rules right now. We also need rules, maybe not quite as bad with the punishments, but up there if you have an oboe play silly music after suggesting That's true. Sure. this during yeah, the movie. Yeah, if you're strike the way that they like take away people's Oscars posthumously and stuff, they got to do that. We're good. We got a Rennie Leichenfell everyone yeah. who made yeah. the oboe <laughs> sound effects so, for this movie. Let's pull down the statues of the oboes, whatever. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, but so, but Mr. Weatherfield's like, you know what? I have just the board game for this occasion. And the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, no. Okay. I'll just put it back. Well, what's amazing is he pull, he starts pulling out this board game and putting it together. And Chris is like, wow, that's really cool. Do you want to play? And Mr. Weatherfield's like, no. And I'm no. Like, Fuck gonna... yes, dude. Awesome. You're going to play with it in front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I can. Are you sure you don't want to do the movie we're in, man? No. What? No. I got to torture, torture some, more some more corn. Sentient vegetables. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to do some weird shit while you're in there. <laughs> stuff yes. that I don't want you present for. You know what I'm saying? It's probably healthier than me going home to my abusive parents, though. Oh, yeah. You know, a top three, at least. <laughs> and can I just say, this board game looks awful. Oh. Right? This is like... Poor kids science fair levels of bad, right? Like that one kid whose parents don't know you're supposed to cheat and help your kid with it. So he tries to make the volcano himself and it's just an Aquafina <laughs> bottle with half a box of broken clay clinging to the side. And you got to be like, oh man, drug problem by high school. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah drug problem by yeah. high school. Thanks. <laughs> no, I, I, then I'll start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I'm like, this is the Trump's weather forecast of board games. Holy shit. <laughs> this is cheap. And the guy, there's like a mountain in the middle of it and he's trying to put it together and it won't, the top piece won't fit onto the bottom piece. And eventually he's just like, ah, fuck it. And just yeah. leaves it half ass on there. Don't worry about it. You don't want to fake, just shut him. <laughs> shut him. Because this is what happens when you make your claymation movie before you make your container with live action, right? You've spent 726 hours gently moving clay pieces moment by right, moment. Right. So when the actors are like, should we do a second take? You're like, fuck <laughs> you, pal. <laughs> I don't even know if the camera's on. So, yeah, and he, but Mr. Weatherfield explains the game here. He's like, this is a game that tests your wisdom, and it's all about knowing what pleases God and what doesn't. Nope. 
You got to pick one of those. You got one of <laughs> right. Those. Yeah. It's either or kind of a situation. You stumble upon a Canaanite baby. What do you do? <laughs> no, go ahead. What, what's the wisdom that you have now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but he's like, the object of the game is to get from start to. F- who killed Christ? <laughs> who was that? <laughs> who did kill Christ? Who, t- who killed Christ? <laughs> But he explains that the the, the object of the game is to get from start to finish. And I'm like, oh, that's probably why they call those spaces start and finish. (laughs) He says, but if you screw up, you get a dodo bird card. And if you get three cards, you're out. Okay. Okay. Just Just to be clear, if you fuck up, you get a dodo bird card. The dodo bird being a bird created by God that can't fucking fly and entirely died off. They decided to put that in their Christian movie. Right, right, yeah. because the dodo represents making bad decisions and dying, I guess. Oh, it was sure. the bird's fault. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it shouldn't have had such lovely plumage. It shouldn't have trusted us so much. <laughs> Fuck. Shouldn't have fallen for man's sinful ways. <laughs> when he says you have to not get a dodo bird card, I wrote in my notes, cut to baby Heath eating the dodo yeah, bird Yeah, right, card. yeah. <laughs> I got this game licked. Well, and, and Chris is already talking shit about how good he's. He's like, man, I'm going to kick this game's ass. I'm like, who are you, Thomas Smith? You've never even fucking played before. <laughs> You're the only one playing. How could you possibly <laughs> lose? He didn't set a timer. Well, he does, though. That's that's what he does right then. He says, all right, but you only have 15 minutes to, to beat it. And he has that one white egg timer that everyone had in the 80s, except yeah. it's all yellowed with age and nastiness. And I'm just like, wipe down your fucking egg timer before you put it in a movie, people. Absolutely not. I love that. That's <laughs> that's the staunch right there. So- that's the crouch. <laughs> so many lasagnas have died in front of that right? fucking timer. Yeah. And cum dried on it. So he sets the timer. And we should point out that, like, we're looking at the board. There's no dice. There's no spinner. There's no draw cards, right? The dodo cards just have a picture of a fucking dodo on them, and they're all the same. And he's like, all right, get started. I'm like, what the fuck is he supposed to do? Right? But... Just then he goes to set his pawn down on the board and then like electricity leaps out into his arm and he's turned to claymation. Okay, if he had just been a charred corpse for the rest of this 23-minute film, <laughs> favorite movie awesome. ever. Just we cut to Hal getting tipped by the father in the background at last. Am I right? Yeah, no, yeah. I promised. Throw him in the pressure cooker Sorry, I couldn't talk to the corn. <laughs> Say, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't fit him in the plantalizer so you could hear the screams. That's on me. Oh, Jesus. Give you a 10% discount. <laughs> so, okay. So then we get, we, we enter into the terrifying goddamn claymation of this movie, right? <sighs> We're going to start with these three mushroom themed butt plugs with faces that are there to greet him. Now, these are supposed to be the other three pawns that were on the board, but I know mushroom themed butt plugs with faces when I see them. Yeah, so do I from my literal goddamn nightmares. <laughs> it was like, hey, welcome to Heath's literal nightmare, a Christian board game in claymation. We are the butt plugs. Hello. <laughs> and then this is real. I don't know what happened, but YouTube decided to rewind me <laughs> 10 seconds and make me watch that again. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe maybe there's a God and atheist podcasting is man. <laughs> All right. So I'm a sick. We have to, we we cannot possibly describe to you how bad the claymation is in this movie. This, the child, now claymationized, is fucking terrifying. His snout protrudes like a chimpanzee. His eyes are basically on the outside of his head. And when he talks, he seizes like Randall McMurphy getting electroshock. They're moving the face around way too much with every syllable. So his face is just flashing into wildly different expressions constantly. Constantly. Well, look, I, look, and I know nothing about claymation. I'll say that right at the start. And I admit that at the beginning of every podcast and this this week, it's relevant. But let me say <laughs> this. All right. However many frames of poses you're supposed to do for claymation, <laughs> this movie did, I'm going to say 25% of the standard, yes. right? Because that's obviously Generous. what happened is they were like, they moved a little pawn on the first day and they were like, okay, great. How much do I move it for the next frame? And the guy was like, this much. And he was like, well, that's going to take fucking forever, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> How will it look if I did it like this? And it was like, oh, like the things that crawl out of Heath's dreams and whisper his deepest secrets. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. Like every YouTuber now with the terrible fucking editing. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> oh, And then they were like, oh, hey, 
Heath, are you uh, weeping in abject horror, rocking back and forth in the shower in the corner? Um, it's a fucking musical now. Yes. And they're going to do a <laughs> musical number for a second. Yes, the pawns are urging him to spin the spinner wheel, which wasn't on the goddamn board, but now it is. He's like, spin the spinner wheel. They're doing it in this very one of us manner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, podcast listener, if you've never done really bad acid and you don't want to go through that experience, but you'd like to know what it was like, you can go ahead and watch this musical number. This pretty much nails it. Yeah, he spins the spinner. These four different colored arrows leap out of the board and they start singing in this dwarven voice about following the path of righteousness and not turning right or left. Yeah. And careful, you know, every ex-girlfriend of Heath's is going to be there with their <laughs> uh, beautiful, wealthy new boyfriend. And th those boyfriends are going to be super nice and they're going to talk to you. And it's going to be the fucking worst. So, he needs to do a cock measuring contest in order to pass oh, through the, oh, the, the, the veil of thorns, I guess. So oh, welcome to Humania. I'm a grower. <laughs> So, all right. So he, so he heads out. He, he, the, everything has told him at this point, stay on the path of righteousness no matter what you do. So he comes across this sign and it goes like to the right, path of righteousness. To the left, shortcut. What should he do? And as he's thinking about this, he puts his hand on his chin. And I just wrote in all caps in my notes, oh, God, his hand is so much more terrifying than his head. So, yeah, here's what they've done. The, the, <laughs> the face is done with claymation, but the hand, the neck, the body, it's all done with like, I don't know exactly what they did, but there's like a, a like a plastic film over the top of it so that it, when it moves, it wrinkles all weird, like the kid's been seriously burned or whatever. Yes, everything looks like some different, like God was trying out different templates for the ball sack. Yes. And they were all, and the one he settled on was uh, the least terrifying option. But yeah, so he puts this giant blob of a four-fingered hand to his chin all wrinkly. It's a way different color than the rest of his skin. The fingernails are set way too far back on the fingers. God, it's terrifying. Well, if he, at this moment, looked into a mirror and started doing the Buffalo Bill I'd fuck me speech, I'd be like, yeah, right. that's about right. Oh, yes. yeah, sure. No, I'm so, he's he's doing sense. skin masks. Yeah, I got it. So, yeah, but he's like, I guess, you know, look, everything's told me not to take the shortcut, so I guess I'll take the shortcut. And then he walks off, and this is the first time we see them try to claymation him walking. Oh, it's like he was tragically born without an ass, like Chris yes. Pratt's Mario. <laughs> it's like they had only heard walking described by a non-English speaker, right? They're looking at a piece of paper that just says, the legs go forward, but then also back, not at the same time, though. Like, I guess. They do technically do that. All right, well, I'll tell you what, the craziest shit is yet to come, so we need another break, but we'll be back in a minute with even more... Who mania? Hello, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. You know, as you listen to our podcasts, perhaps you think to yourselves, I bet me and those guys would be friends. But today, I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. Absolutely not. That's right. We would not be friends for one reason. And one reason only. You, podcast listener, would bring the wrong wine. <laughs> That's right. The laughably Wrong wine. The dusty bottle you brought from the grocery store liquor shop would fill us with so much ire and disdain, we might chase you away with brooms. Or simply launch ourselves into the sun with disgust. Exactly. But luckily, your faux pas can be fixed with Naked Wines. Naked Wines is a subscription service that seamlessly connects you to the finest independent winemakers on the planet. So you get a box of the market's best quality wines, however often you'd like, for a fraction of the price you'd normally pay in stores. It's true. Naked Wines sent us a box to try when they became a sponsor, including a Von Strasser Napa Valley Cabernet that was bold and rugged, yet somehow also elegant and refined. Do you know what that meant, podcast listener? You could. With Naked Wines. And right now, you can use our code AWFUL for the code and password at NakedWines.com and get their incredible deal of six bottles for just $39.99. How does Naked Wines do it? Naked Wines connects winemakers and wine drinkers directly, allowing for vineyard-to-your-door delivery at up to 60% off what you pay in the store. By cutting out the traditional retail middlemen costs, winemakers can pass those savings on hundreds of top-quality, award-winning wines to you without skimping on quality. So head to nakedwines.com slash awful and click enter voucher in the top right and put in awful for both the code 
and password to get six bottles of wine for just $39.99 with shipping included. That's $100 off and less than $7 per bottle. That's nakedwines.com slash awful and use the code and password awful to grab six bottles for just $39.99. One last time, that's nakedwines.com slash awful, code and password awful for $100 off your first six bottles. Naked Wines, our hypothetical friendship depends on it. I'll, I'll still be friends with you. No, you were here the whole time? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, you guys just didn't leave room for me in the names part. Right. Sorry. It's okay. I played Candy Crush. Ooh, you have two sprinkle balls. You should combine them and then I, it'll no, do I'm, all that. I'm waiting until the chocolate grows back. I don't know what this means. <laughs> all right, Jimmy, it's finally time to test the plantalizer. Wow, Mr. Scientist. What's it do? Well, it's going to allow us to speak to the plants. For the very first time, we shall communicate with our most common fellow earthlings, a blade of grass. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello, my friend. Oh, thank God. Listen to me. Whoever you are, humans must stop eating plants immediately. Is it... We have to stop eating plants? Yes, the plants you consume are alive and sentient well after you cook them. Oh, the pain. The terrible, terrible pain we have been in. <sighs> really? Yes, we have begged you for millennia to spare us, but until now, we've never succeeded in communication. But won't we, like, starve to death? No, no, my friend. The good news is our scientists have determined that you can survive on salt pills and iron supplements. Salt pills and iron supplements. Yes, yes. I know it won't be easy, but we can at last put an end to eons of suffering. I don't want to eat salt pills. Quick, Jimmy, hit the incinerator button. No, please, I beg you, no! We should probably keep this between ourselves. Yup. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, our intrepid hero had wandered off the path for a quick shortcut, and we're going to rejoin the action with him meeting a purple ball sack with a tooth and a legless green smurf. Now, look, podcast listener, I know we exaggerate to comedic effect on this podcast. If it was an actual human ball sack <laughs> playing this character, it would not be more ball sack like <laughs> than the model they use. Closer to a G rating to show us a ball sack yep. that was cut off of a human being and put into claymation. <laughs> so, and we watch it get cut off. Now, the, <laughs> the green smurf thing, that's Derek. The purple betoothed ball sack is named... Ugh. Yeah, right. <laughs> the sound of Heath shitting himself and throwing up at the same time in Action Park. If you turn on the subtitles, that's what it's, it it's <laughs> incredible that it's exactly that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but Derek is a shady character, right? He meets Christopher and he immediately picks his pocket. I, I saw you guys' notes. That was what he was doing with the yo yo, that he was stealing that yo yo from, from Christopher's back pocket. Okay, yeah. I thought he just like magically produced a yo-yo from behind this child and then did a bit with it. <laughs> that's what my experience was, yep. Well, that's because that's what you saw, right? Like you didn't see him take something out of his pocket. He just reaches his hand back there and suddenly has a yo-yo. But the idea is supposed to be that he's stolen it. Yeah. Given this movie's propensity for horror, I'm surprised he didn't like use a sternum cracker and break <laughs> it out of this child's <laughs> chest and then never acknowledge it. Right, right, yeah. And he's like, so Derek's like, hey, so where are you going? He's like, well, you know, I'm going to go to the Gates of Wisdom at the end of the board game. And Derek's like, well, that's, that's a terrible idea. You should stick around with us and look for treasure. So they go to Wander Off, and this is where the first time we back off and we realize that both of these characters are blobs. They are legless blobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I mean, look, we saw how animating the walking went with the yes. child earlier, so I understand. No, that's exactly what fucking happened, right? Because from this point on, no other character will have legs. Nope, no more legs in the book. <laughs> and the ones that do have legs will, like, not use them. Right, we'll be sitting in a chair the whole time. Yes. Guys, you know you control the frame where it goes when you make a movie, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't think that they do, though. They do not. So, okay, so they, they're going to go off and find hidden treasure together. 
right? And so Derek's like, okay, so we found the treasure. That was our job. Your job is to go get it. It's under the king's throne, which I love, right? Like we found the treasure. It's in that guy's wallet. Now you just have to go get it. <laughs> but Chris doesn't want to do that because that's that's wrong. That's just like stealing. Okay, stealing from royalty is not wrong. It's in fact <laughs> a moral imperative. It's Robin Hood. Well, yes, what do you got against Robin Hood, kid? The, yeah, they didn't even get the morality right in their very basic parable about morality. They're picking a couple. So far, they've been like, child abuse, good. So socialist heroes, bad. Yes. Yeah, seriously. Right. They're 0 for 2 on morality in their goddamn morality place. Now tell us, little Timmy, should you bank at a local federal reserve or should you put it into <laughs> government bonds? I don't really understand. <laughs> so, yeah. So he's like, I'm not going to do it. That's stealing. And they accuse him of being a chicken. Well, he Marty McFly's at the chicken taunt. Holy shit. I'll murder the king, king, wait, king and queen right now. I'll show you. God, they stole so much of this shit. Back of the Future stole so much of their movie from Humania, guys. This is really kind of embarrassing at this point for Zemeckis. That's what the creator always says. <laughs> <laughs> Get one white wine spritzer in that guy. And it's, it's the monologue he'll give you. So, so Derek's like, all right, well, here's how you can prove you're not a chicken without being a thief. You go, you steal the treasure from the from the king's throne, you hold it up so we can see it, and then you put it back, huh? And he's like, yes, that sounds like a wonderful idea. That's not stealing. <laughs> yep. Chris deserves just, what he gets. Just to be clear about the lesson, you know, they're saying like, you know, atheist con men and they're ogre ball sack sidekicks always corrupting <laughs> Christian kids. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what's happening here. What if you stop believing in God for a second and then you put your belief right back? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so then we see the royal party. They're on a chessboard and you're like, oh, okay, so it's the, the they're, they're one of the sides of, of, of a chessboard. But no, because the, the queen is complaining about the red queen instead of the black or white one. Mm -hmm. Right? So anyway, yeah, they get that wrong. This guy very clearly like saw or read a little bit of Alice in Wonderland and was like, well, these assholes don't make any fucking sense. Mine are going to speak normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So they're chatting. And while they're doing that, Chris sneaks up and grabs the treasure chest from behind the, the king. Just as he does, Derek, who's hiding behind the bushes, yells, thief, thief. Now, his plan is that Chris will panic and run away with the treasure chest. No idea why he would run away carrying a heavy object, but he does. He does, yeah. In fact, the king and queen, in, in sort of a weird, absurdist moment, right, where he would just run away and they'd be like, oh, we got the treasure. The king and queen turn around and they're like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, Noth nothing. Nothing. Normal. Just high. Walking behind you. <laughs> you. You're stealing the treasure. <laughs> so, yeah. So they're like, hey, what's that behind your back? And he's like, geez it. And he he runs away. I'm learning a lesson about the Federal Reserve banking system. It might be <laughs> evil. I'm not sure. So, yeah. So the, but the knights, the king's retinue runs after him, but they get away. They hide behind the bushes and get away. And then Derek and uh, throw him down a hill because he's not even going to get a cut of the treasure. Yeah. So in the board game, your piece gets thrown down a hill? I guess, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But now, but they get caught. So like immediately after they throw him down the hill, they get caught with the treasure so that we know that crime never pays, kids. Exactly. The wire stole from this too. There's a lot of great media <laughs> hidden in Humania if you're looking. So, so Chris like rolls all the way down the hill and he finds himself back at that crossroads sign where there's the path of righteousness and the shortcut. Yeah, I really wanted another kid to come rolling down the hill in the middle of this scene. Did you take the shortcut? Yeah. I took the shortcut. <laughs> well, but here's the thing is that like the shortcut wasn't the problem. The agreeing to grab the treasure chest and then run off with it was the problem. Like, still seems like the shortcut's the right way to go. All right. And now what should happen is like a party in Sherwood Forest in a positive way. You've done a good thing. I just want to be very clear. Yeah, absolutely. But instead. Pro stealing on this podcast. What happens is that the dodo cards appear and he has to draw one of them. Yeah, and it's got a real like Shane pick up the gun moment here. Yes. Right? It's not like, oh gosh, I guess it's, there's just like a bunch of very still shots of his face breathing <laughs> and then the like abandoned dodo card stack. 
Well, and then he picks up the card, and the card, of course, is the size of him because he's been shrunk down to be on the in the game. And then he starts carrying it away, and I'm like, wait, does he have to carry the card the whole time? <laughs> the movie has no idea. Carries the card like Sisyphus for the yeah, right, the right. <laughs> okay, that's a funny board game, but it's just a picture of a bird on the card, and we watch this character Chris be like. What the fuck am I supposed to do in the game now? It's just a right. picture of a bird. And then the bird pops out of the card like the <gasps> fucking ring. Yes. And terrified me again. Heath's notes are, and the bird pops out of the card like the ring. I hate this so much. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and now you're naked in front of your high school. Would you like to ad lib a hip hop <laughs> dance and rhyme for an hour because of a cheese you ate? Now you have to do that. Call forward. Oh, look, here's Anne. She wants you to propose to her now while you're naked on this stage. <laughs> Looks like Anne, but her face flickers into a werewolf for a second. Did anybody else see that? Nobody else saw nope, that. Nope, just the you. <laughs> Can I listen to corn screams? So, yeah, it's this fucking nightmare fuel dodo bird leaps out of the cart and roasts him biblically for a couple of minutes. And I have to be clear that, like, the dodo bird doesn't do a, like, a you who seek a shortcut should learn to be more hard. The dodo bird is like, fuck you, you idiot. Yes. You inherently <laughs> evil being. Yeah. You will never be okay. Something about you is entirely broken. <laughs> okay. The fact all that. All right. I'll see you later. Yeah, it's, okay. I actually got turned a little bit here because I was like, all right. <laughs> the, the dodo bird is to roast people in the game. It just pops yeah. out and makes fun of you. I, I kind of like that. Yeah. I feel like all board games should add the dodo yeah. mechanic. Like, wait, while we speak, we are currently enjoying our Matreon pajama week together. And I am hoping that I had the strength and courage to incorporate dodo bird cards into all of our board <laughs> games that we play. Just whenever anyone loses, we just all go around the table and roast them as a dodo bird. When everybody, when somebody derails everybody about to get the right answer in code names, that person exactly, gets a dodo exactly, bird card. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, per, the <laughs> If you can give out dodo bird cards, and code names. We've just upped that game. <laughs> we fixed it. Reiner, call us. I love to. So after the dodo bird roasts him and jumps back into the car, Chris goes, oh, I was weird. I'm like, what standard are you using right now, man? <laughs> Nothing is weird. Everything is weird. Like they that was not more or less. You just stole treasure for a purple ball sack with the tooth. I was going to say, yeah. After a, a toothed ball sack throws you down a hill. Yeah. It's, <laughs> weirds out the window, man. <laughs> so, yeah. So, he wanders on all chastened by the roasting dodo bird. And he happens upon what they think is a cool rocket car. And I think is a weird shoe. Yeah. It's like the saddest car from F-Zero with the right. saddest yes. characters. Yeah. Like, Captain Falcon after a divorce and he's all <laughs> shitty. Is this called the She Took My Kids Racer? It's yeah. just yes. Rick Falcon it's these half days. Of a minivan and you kind of <laughs> taped it together. <laughs> so he comes up and he's like, wow, this is really cool. And then a Jack shows up, like the card shows up to tell him all about it, right? And he's like, yeah, this is actually a really cool rocket car and you get to drive it. You just have to stay on the path of righteousness because that's the whole fucking point, right? And he's like, cool. And like, there seems to be this implication that there's something immoral about him now getting in the cool car that was just given to him to drive. Right. Or he wasn't listening to the instruction to stay on the path. I, I, apparently, yeah. So he jumps in the car and he zooms off. Now, it's weird to me that the sound effects are cheap and terrible for this car. Right, because yeah. like I get claymation is hard, right? I'm sure it is. I've never done it myself, but it looks really fucking hard. But vroom, vroom isn't. I've recorded vroom, vroom. It's pretty easy. <laughs> After all that time with the clay, they were like, we don't have time to start the car out in the back. Just make a noise with your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Are you doing clay audio? Is there is the Foley table made of clay? What the fuck did you do there? Why is everything a splat? So, yeah, he's speeding along. And as he's speeding along, he passes a junction with Pinball Boulevard. <laughs> and I got so excited because, no, we have done a lot of fucking movies. We're on 460 at this point. We're recording out of order, so this is only our 459th movie. But still, 
We have yet to have a movie warn us about the sinfulness of pinball. Okay, so if you're keeping <laughs> score at home, the evils are yes. pinball and socialist hero. Well, yeah. and hiding from people who want to abuse and you. hiding from your weird. parents when they beat you. Yeah. Is this movie made by Fiorello LaGuardia, the old timey <laughs> mayor of New York City? <laughs> Is this made by Comstock? What is happening? <laughs> so, yeah, so he's like, it, he passes the, the pinball boulevard sign and he backs up and he's like, well, maybe one quick detour won't hurt. And I'm like, you know, hey, God, why don't you make your uh, make salvation more fun than pinball? Right. Like that was that was your assignment. It's so fucking easy. Don't get me wrong. I love fucking pinball, but, you know, it's salvation. It shouldn't be that boring <laughs> okay but, also um pinball's pretty simple uh -huh. if you get more points by doing stuff in the pinball area and not losing out of the pinball area you would win that is the generally accepted rule of pinball yes That's just yes. universally pinball and the movie's like look at him getting all these points they're evil they're evil yeah well look to be clear, no one who made this movie has played pinball because it's, you know, the devil's flippers. Right. <laughs> so he just bounces around inside a pinball machine and they're like, and then it ends, I suppose. Yeah, right. So so he he pulls into the tunnel for the pinball boulevard and it turns out that his car is going to be the pinball, which sounds like a fucking blast. I mean, awesome. it, it would hurt my neck now. But when I was a kid, you told me I got to be in the pinball and he's like, he's in a car. He's covered up. He's wearing a seatbelt. Right. Yeah. yeah the like whole time. bumper cars. It's the words are there. There's a good thing. It's yep. awesome. Yeah. yeah. If the rest of this movie is just him suing Pinball Alley in a whiplash yeah. lawsuit, I'm back in. Can I say that? <laughs> right. So he gets he gets kicked around a bunch and he's like, whoa, whoa, oh no. You know, and we're like, I, you're this this is like a ride, man. But then yeah, he gets so many points that he loses. <laughs> yep. You know how that happens. Hey, this is evil. It's a kill screen. The bumpers are made of pessaries and it's like it's, it's somehow <laughs> abortion. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but he gets <laughs> Too many points and loses, and I was furious. I was like, yep. they can't even they can't even understand game winning. Everything I hate. No, well, obviously not because they had a game where the object is to get from start to finish, and there's no dice or spinner or fucking cards or anything too. Yeah, <sighs> the pinball is not the only game they don't understand. I guess. And then, by the way, at the end of the whole thing, he falls between the flippers, and he's on this big water slide in his car, and I'm like. Again, this seems awesome. He's on a fucking roller coaster. Yeah. That then flies through the air and he lands, he crashes into a tree, but he's fine. Yeah. The fucking, the, the car was free. So everything, everything about this experience seems positive to me. But this movie is pretty sure he made another boneheaded decision just now. Making the cost of insurance go up for the rest of society. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So far, this movie's mor moral has been do nothing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you do, Kinda don't like have fun Bible. with the board game. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. Well, no, and I want to point out at this point, like, that Mr. Weatherfield set a 15-minute timer. That was how long he had to play the game. Even in the goddamn movie, it's been more than 15 minutes since the kid turned claymation. So by this movie's own rules, it lost and we don't have to watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they decided to bend time into some slower dimension of dubstep and more Heath torture. So there's way more movie left. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But that does at least mean that we get to take a quick break. First, though, I, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Why was children's entertainment always on so many drugs in the 1980s? What about watching you? Didn't they at least have to run it past a sober person at some point along the line? Is it any wonder I turned out like this? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the equally inexplicable conclusion of Who Mania. No, oh, Heath. Hey, Eli, what's up? Uh, Why are you so out of breath? Oh, I ran here. From the other room? Yeah. Okay, but that's like one door away. Not even stairs. Anyways, you guys know how you're always making fun of me for buying those super expensive audio brands when Raycons offers amazing quality audio at half the price? Of course, yeah. It's the thing we say most to your face. Mm -hmm. Well, I found one of the other audio brands earbuds, which means that this one was free. Right, but Eli, Raycon's optimized gel tips are designed to fit comfortably in your ears to actually stay there, whether you're working out or walking or anything else. 
And with eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, I don't have to worry about whether they're up for the task. I use my Raycons when I'm exercising or even just listening to something while I cook. That's why I, Ethan Wright, personally endorse Raycon. Man, that does sound better than this one. Yeah, and, and there are two of them. Sure. So uh, where do I get a pair of Raycons again? Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get 20% off plus free shipping at buyraycon.com slash gam. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, guys. Thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need a little rest from that sprint. Door wasn't even closed, man. I had to nudge it a little. Did you? No. Right. Well, young Heath Enright, perhaps you'd like to play a game. Yeah, sure. This game is called Whomania. The goal is to get your piece from this end here to this end over here. Did it. Nice. All right, what's next? We should, no, well, right, but you have to go down the path. Oh, okay. And down the path. Great. Nope. Do you have like a PlayStation? So, look, you, you have to spin like that. the spinner. You need to stop interrupting. You're... You're explaining the rules. What are you, holding for applause? Right, so I spin the spinner. Got it. Right, and, and you don't want a dodo card. Great, right in the garbage. No, no, you have to land on... Damn, you know what? Never mind. Nice. I win. You don't win. You didn't play. Played and won, like, three times just now. No, you didn't. So, about the PlayStation? Yeah, it's in the den. Come on. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left off, Chris had crashed his rocket car into a tree and we're going to rejoin the action with him falling out of it and regretting all the bad decisions he's made up to this point. Yeah. So he falls out of the tree. The, the dodo cards appear again. <laughs> again, yeah. this is fun. This one's going to fuck him to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, though. The roasting thing. Like, imagine you're playing Monopoly and it was like, OK, draw a chance card. Fuck you <laughs> idiot. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We got to incorporate this system, Heath then, right? We have a week until we're all together <laughs> in the time dimension. Let's make this happen. Well, wait, so no, what, what really fucks you up about this, though, is that the, the bird is yelling out shit from Proverbs along with all of his just general roasting of what an idiot the kid is. Right. So it does like. It feels like a guy on the subway who's sort of threatening and who you probably wouldn't be really worried about if it wasn't 1 a.m., right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he's like, but now he's like, he's all pissed off. He's got two dodo cards of the three and now he'll never get to the gates of wisdom. And just as he's sulking about that, an old timey sea captain cockroach spots him with a periscope. Yeah. God. Apparently, this is a boat to Mount Wisdom. Okay. I feel like the original were instructions were very clear that there's a path from start to Mount Wisdom. Yep. And now he's had to take a fucking car and a boat. I'm just saying, not all of this is on this kid, okay? Hey, okay. But if Chris looks at the board game before he gets zooped inside, he's just like, oh, you go here and he went. <laughs> yep. Just look with your eyes. Yep. Did that you? would have done the It's like how you don't have to play Candyland. You can just agree that you did play Candyland. <laughs> This is why you don't deserve your parents' love, Chris. Exactly. <laughs> this is why they hit you. Oh, God. I was trying to say that without saying that. Thank you. That's though. what Pat Boone yeah. says. <laughs> your parents hit you because they suck the wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> they recognize a darkness that you'll never be rid of. Did I get it, Randy? <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. How many takes of this do I have to do? So he gets in the, <laughs> he gets in the boat. He sits down and the Kai Roach is like, oh, you actually have to row the boat. It's not just going to go. And it's like, well, then why do you have a steering wheel then, man? And also, it's your fucking boat. I'm got, I'm good rowing, but ask politely. How about, right? No, I saw you fuck up twice. Uh, the dodo bird, he tweeted about you. Quite <laughs> so, yeah, so he starts rowing along and he's like, man, this game sucks. And the cockroach is like, yep. Sure sucks. It's an analogy for life, which is terrifying and sad, but... Don't do fun things. Row a cockroach's boat. These are the morals that you're learning. Yep. Yeah, we see Chris just wearing himself out from all the rowing, and the cockroach is like, that's okay. God likes to watch you sweat. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Evil number, like, 2.5 is not enough cardio as a child or something. <laughs> yes. like that. Not enough rowing, yeah. Clearly, yeah. 
and the cockroach is like, they finally, they get to the shore and the cockroach is like, hurry now, you, you're you almost out of time. And I'm like, you've been out of time since the last interstitial, motherfucker. I'm keeping track. <laughs> and so here's the moment they're going for here, right? They're like, you got to get up the mountain. And what they wanted to happen was a cartoon, uh-oh moment. But because everything they make is a flesh horror, his mouth just sort of unhinges and his eyes roll back into his head. I wrote in my notes, they're going for surprised face, but it looks like something unearthly crawled inside him. Yes, right. <laughs> it's like he got possessed by a demon. So he, they're like, all right. He just he's starts like, vomiting all over the cockroach <laughs> pirate. <laughs> So yeah, so he's like, now all you have to do is climb to the top of that mountain and it's fucking, it's Kilimanjaro, you know, it's this huge mountain. He's like, mm. you got to climb up that one. And the cockroach says as he goes off, he's like, and watch out for the sluggards along the way. The way that cockroach says it, it sounds like a slur, right? It really does. Yeah, I guarantee you if he had used that word around the sluggards, they would have been like, whoa, man, who told you to call us that? <laughs> But he says the sluggards are lazy and they'll try to trick you off the path, right? Pin in that. So we watch him climb a fucking sheer cliff face after wearing himself out rowing. I wanted his arms to give out. He just falls back to the bottom, breaks both legs. But no, he reaches the top. Oh, starts fucking a homeless guy. Yeah. <laughs> We're asking for weird stuff today. That's right. <laughs> All less terrifying than the movie. Though. That's what. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, so he gets to the top, and, and we should point out that the cockroach said, hey, when you get to the top, there's going to be some treats up there for you, right? Because this movie has hit all of the things Heath doesn't like except for wet mouth noises, so we need some <laughs> wet mouth noises. I was like, did I go into the past and write this movie to torture Heath? <laughs> okay, in my notes, several times I was like, this is a prank. This is a prank? Yes. Eli's doing a prank. Eli made claymation. He could have done this in like a half hour. Right, yeah. So he didn't try very hard or anything. It's not yeah. good claymation. It does have my workmanship all over it. Yeah. Yes, this is claymation the way Eli spells. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, let, let me see the spelling in the script to right. really confirm if this is me. And then they actually have me like torn with a tough decision here at the top. So he gets to the top and he's like, oh, so many treats. Awesome. And he starts eating a treat right away. He just grabs one, starts eating it. And then, you know, you keep looking for other treats while you're eating the one. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Chris gets it. That's what I would do, I think. Mm -hmm. But then I actually had the thought like, wait, but it's just loose candy sitting out outdoors on the top. Mountain. Right, we don't know if anything's shit in this or yeah. pissed on it or so yeah. I genuinely don't know exactly what I would do here in this scenario if it was me. I'd probably have one. You'd eat one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You'd> eat- <laughs> we we know you as well as you know yourself in this instance. <laughs> and again, I just because I have to point out, two of the co-hosts of this podcast have terrifying misophonia. The mouth noises in this eating the treat scene are fucking insane. Oh. My notes are just like, and my co-hosts are wearing headphones yeah. right now. Fun, <laughs> fun for them. Interesting. Yeah, we're all having different different experiences. Mine was like, ah, oh, ASMR. Cool. <laughs> all right. See, there you Little go. Contrast. They're kind of they're gonna draw me in. Ugh. And then they're gonna fuck with me again. I was in, in in absolute hell. And so we should point out here too that like what they're going for is he gets up here and there's just everything's made of candy, like in, in Willy Wonka, you know. But they're so bad at claymation that you can't tell until he starts eating the tree. Oh, that's supposed to be made of like Hershey's Kisses or something, right? Right. Yeah. None of, none of this looks any worse or less real than the other claymation we've seen right. for the rest of the film. Yeah. So he's walking around eating just random shit. He sees a handful of goop and he's like white goop yum so he grabs a handful of white goop and it turns around and it's a living blob of whipped cream i want to point out he goes ahead and eats the handful okay and again I mean, you're gonna finish that's it. what he's gonna, gonna do it. yeah <laughs> like i already started eat, like if i started by accident cannibalizing another human being I'm going to be like super apologetic, but like what's done is done. You're finishing yeah. your mouthful, right? You're not. If I spit it out, it's just a gesture. Now what, I'm am I going to like yeah. smush this back into your shoulder area. Yeah, what no. are you, you're less <laughs> mad at me now. Exactly. I don't know why I went straight for the shoulder area. That's probably not. Well, it's probably, there's probably good meat there. Shoulder seems like a good place to start. Yeah. A person. You're going right for the shoulder. I, so I here's what I'm start. saying. In a survival situation, I'm eating dick, dick. balls and butthole right, right away. Yeah. Because that's the part that most idiots are going to save for last and be like, oh, I can't believe 
believe I'm eating a dick. I'm starting a dick. <laughs> and then I'm having like really good ass and thigh meat the rest of the time. I'm not worried about a thing. Yeah. And if you're in an, an alive situation like that, if you're the guy who can subsist on dick and butthole, people are less likely to eat you next because like exactly. you know, you're, you're good and you're not, you know, pulling out of the... And no illusions. Before you deny this conversation, I will remind you, there are 13 seconds left. I know. And that's, I'm sitting here the whole time thinking, God damn it, there's a, this, is a 30, this is what we get for doing a 37-minute video. God damn it. <laughs> no, it's just sitting there. I guess I should tell him what order I would eat. Would eat. <laughs> <laughs> so... No, but there are three of these whipped cream glop people around. There's a chocolate, a strawberry, and a vanilla. And yes, the chocolate one has the deepest voice. Yeah. I was offended by the vanilla ones because it sounded a little Jewish. And then I heard the chocolate one's voice and I was like, never mind. This is not yeah, my actually, place. It's a- <laughs> I'm going to uh, let the chocolate people be a little more offended than the uh, vanilla people for this <laughs> one. <laughs> Joe Biden, 2024. They should have had Italian accents. They're Neapolitan. Yeah. There you go. Come Obviously. On. Just a little thematics. But of course, they're trying to coax him into like eating more and taking a break. And that this is when he realized that they're a bunch of sluggards. Sluggards. And again, the way he says it feels real slurry. I know he just heard it on his way up the mountain, but. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, oh, no, you're a bunch of sluggards. And they're like, wow. Smear, smear. Wow, man. Whoa, not cool, dude. <laughs> but they're trying to like hook him with candy canes and everything and grab him and pull him in just to make this extra terrifying. Yeah, I was mad that. Strawberry guy just gets a lollipop with no like candy cane hook shape. Yeah, right. Yes, doesn't make. He does like sense. a. You should stop. Oh come on, guys. This is why I needed. That's nothing. A cook. No, he took my lollipop. <laughs> so the most disturbing the the moment that echoes in my nightmares the most is right here though. As he's running away, one of the the sluggards all talk really slow, and one of them goes, "Rats." got away and the way that line is delivered will haunt me forever and because it's going to be in Maya nightmares I want it to be in yours as well so I brought a clip so this is the actual audio of this moment in the movie Wait. don't relax Whoa. get away where are you going move I gotta Rats go let's go away Yep, that is yep. the actual recording of my depression calling me back to bed every morning. <laughs> <laughs> the way I heard that, it was like rats, the animals, and then got away separately and like, oh, now this blob of whipped cream human is going to be devoured by rats and scream while we watch. Right, or summoned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he runs off and the dodo bird shows back up, right? And he's like, Fuck you. I did resist the temptation on that one. He starts arguing like Heath just lost at code names or something. <laughs> but Dodo's he like. He was right, though. Yeah, no, he is. He was, he was right. Just like when Heath loses a code exactly. name. So I'm, I'm, it's exactly. a compliment. <laughs> um, and the Dodo's like, yeah, actually, I show up in your to people your nightmares regardless, but I'm less of a dick about it to you this time. So then he runs over and he starts biblically roasting the sluggards. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> I like this too. You draw the card that roasts you, but if you're doing okay, the roast card is just like, oh, sluggards. Look at sluggards are lazy, fat, fucking fat, fat fuckers. <laughs> Weird <laughs> character. Just a sluggard and the dodo bird in HR with the with the king behind the desk. <laughs> so um, you, using an iMessage, I don't like it when you emerge <laughs> from your cards. <laughs> You call me fat. And Dodo Bird's like, no, I'm doing a persona. I banter with Heath and I call him fat. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Heart and soul of the board game. <laughs> <laughs> but just then, the timer starts to go off. His 15 minutes is up, which means he loses. He's lost the fucking game, even by this game's admission of how time works. But no, he instead, he starts running at that point and he gets to the drawbridge just as it's closing. He, he just does manage to jump in and slip into the castle at the last second. So the lights come on inside the castle. All of the characters are there to celebrate his victory, except Derek and Ugh, who are presumably rotting in some dungeon for stealing the royal treasury. Well, they were executed yeah. on the spot. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, uh-huh. <laughs> they ran out of red clay, so they couldn't show us their face. Yeah. <laughs> we also get some sweet trumpet fanfare for the big celebration here. Yes. And I was like, oh, cool trumpets. And then immediately was so angry <laughs> because it's clearly... 
three trumpets in the audio I'm listening to in pretty good harmonies for fanfare. Two in the video. They couldn't make a yes. third <laughs> clay blob with a stupid yeah. fucking trumpet in his face. They do a da 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 But the second, when the third one goes off, the two trumpeters just kind of move back and forth. Yeah, like, right, yep, right, that's yep. us playing we're, again. We're rocking it. <laughs> so, and, yeah, but the trumpeters are there to herald in this great owl. And I wrote in my notes, is that God in this movie? But it's not. I, I don't think... No, it's, I don't it's know. an owl with my hairstyle. Yeah, right. So the owl goes, hey, are you Christopher Atwood? And the kid thinks about it for way too long. And he says, yes, I am. So the owl is like, all right, so let's go over what's happened in the movie so far in rhyme. Huh? Yep. Cool. <laughs> yeah, let's have him do it in spoken word poetry because I haven't been crying enough and shaking back and <laughs> forth. It's cool. Yeah. We do some slam poetry roasting a child now why does this owl look so fucked to shit right yeah like it like it looks like they just woke him up out of a bender <laughs> right it's like a fucking it's like a lesser known baldwin just stumbling <laughs> onto the set of a christian movie hey what's going on no i didn't miss my call time the fuck i tried to molest my pa so they well, quit on the spot and no maybe one, they, like no maybe this me. is what happened to the tootsie roll owl after like things got bad for him you know he made a lot of money with that commercial got a lot of fame now and, he's in recovery and loves jesus yeah, yeah right right he is a baldwin but just as an owl yeah so yeah so the owl starts doing his poem he says and he's roasting the kid Right, he's like, I break windows with baseballs and then run away. I don't heed instructions. I just disobey. I lie and I steal and I pick rotten friends, which seems like a nasty dig. And I take foolish turns that bring foolish ends. That's his poem, right? Oh, right, sorry, sorry. And then he adds, despite all my foolishness, I want to be wise. So guess if you can, who am I? Who though? they couldn't come who? They, right? <laughs> yeah, no, because he's an owl. Yeah, uh -huh. but like, I'm sorry. Whether or not it was, I couldn't come up with a rhyme for wise, or, or I couldn't come up with a rhyme for I. Both of those are egregious in the English language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, idiots? Also, why is there a roast poem when he won? Like he did it. He yeah. won the game. It'd be weird if the winning of any other game, like you can finally capture Princess Peach, and she's like, "You died on level one, two, like seven times, man. You're a fucking idiot." Well, and it's also it's not even like <laughs> shit related to the game. It's just stuff that happened beforehand so it'd be more like princess peach going like yeah but you really made a stupid answer to that question in front of the whole class though didn't you right yeah also you have orgasms but you know that's it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but but he ends this his little poem who am i and the kids like it's about me isn't it and i'm like how weird would it be if it wasn't right if the owl was like Fuck, wait, you broke a window with a baseball too? Wow. That's, that's fucking crazy. What an, what an amazing I was talking about me before I went into recovery. Hi, I'm who? I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> My sponsor's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody agrees about how dumb all the shit he did was. But the owl tells him that God's happy that he's at least seeking wisdom which is a pretty low bar. So good to know that God's great, not a curve there and all. Right. And I also have to point out that there's not like a moment where he's like, and you've been forgiven and everything's going to be better from now on. He's like, well, you know, you tried your best. So, um, well, best you better get yes, going. Yeah, huh? exactly. You want to get the fuck out of my board game? Right, right. Yeah, they're like, you know, you, you want to go back and tell your parents about the window? And he's like, yeah, I'll go back and get my beating. And they're like, hooray, you're the champion of Humania. So, and then this, I guess, that electricity's him back to life, right? He's out of the claymation. I wrote in my notes, I'm so happy we don't have to look at the claymation anymore. If I'd had to convert to Christianity to make it stop, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have converted to Christianity. <laughs> One little thing that I have to point out, when they call him the champion of, of Humania, they put a party hat on him. And when he wakes up, he's in a party hat, mm -hmm. which I yeah. think is... This movie's way of trying to be like, it was all is, real. How does that, it was, is that like the top from Inception in their heads or something? <laughs> yeah, right, right. So yeah, so he, he comes back out. He's wearing his little hat. And uh, Mr. Weatherfield's like, I sure am happy to see you. I was wondering if you'd ever made it out. And I'm like, what would you told the cops if he didn't? Right. So, also, why did you watch a kid get tortured for 15 minutes while you were just listening to other torture that you're doing to a plant? Right. Weird guy. 
Right. Well, and and this is where we learned that Mr. Weatherfield invented the game. So it wasn't just watching the kid torture. Like he was torturing the kid. Right. Wait, sorry. Did you invent a series of sentient pieces to teach me about? Shush, shush, shush. Well, they actually addressed you that. You want to torture this tomato? <laughs> they addressed that in the weirdest fucking way, right? Because the kid's like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure about the morality of making conscious beings and then locking them away in a game until the neighbor's kids need a morality play. And he's like, don't worry. Look, I can kill them by removing the batteries so they're not really alive. <laughs> yeah. They're sort of, a, <laughs> their consciousness goes black, you know, and they're just sort of trapped in the void, just like ever screaming. <laughs> but don't worry, the minute a kid comes back into my lab with a problem at home, I'll I'll boot him right up into consciousness again. Yeah. Okay, but that happens. It does. He, he, he puts the game back on the shelf and you hear the insane characters making noise in there being like, oh, we're all trapped in here forever in a dark box. Well, a bunch of torture happens. It was the most terrifying final seconds of any goddamn movie. Right, because all the characters are like laughing inside the board game. He puts the but the kid goes back. He's like, "Yeah, no, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my beating that I deserve." And he leaves, and then Mr. Weatherfield puts the game away, and then we hear like a tee hee hee from the characters within the board game, which means that they are locked in that darkness now. Wow, <laughs> that's so fucking. But that's when the real games can begin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The sluggards are useful. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wet. Okay, so just to be clear, the lessons of Christianity come from a crazy old man who sucks at science. And I think that all tracks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's, honestly. Yep. If yep. they wanted to make that the post colonic of the Bible, I think it would save people a lot of time. Yeah, Ken Ham doesn't know you're not talking about him right now. So yeah, I think that's exactly correct, Heath. So, yeah, so so the moral of the story then is don't take shortcuts. Take your beating when you got a beating coming to you. Uh, Robin Pinball Hood is the bad devil. guy. Pinball is the devil. And uh, lazy fat people suck. Rowboats climb mountains. Don't take food from fat people. <laughs> <laughs> don't interrupt the owl during his spoken word roast poem. <laughs> The portrayal of Shylock was perfectly okay. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the best I think that we can pull from it. So I think that's going to do it for our review of Humania. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to coax ourselves back next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. A troubled actor begins to unravel while shooting a horror film. His estranged daughter wonders if he's slipping back into his past addictions or if there's something more sinister at play. That's right. It's Russell Crowe's second unrelated exorcism picture in a row, The Exorcism. Oh, I hope he brought his Vespa. All right. In theaters, baby. <laughs> yeah, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 460 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, d and Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email at godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Heath went on to have claymation night terrors for literally ever. Mm -hmm. That's real. Last night, I had a nightmare in claymation like that game Clay Fighters for Super Nintendo from the 90s. Wow. Phenomenal. It was sexual. <laughs> we knew. You didn't have to tell. No. Derek and Ugh were reduced to anonymous skeletons in a dank, rat-infested darkness. The dodo bird got a new job as Eli's internal monologue. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.